Are you thinking about going out on your own? <clears throat> I know I was there at one point. It's scary though. 95% of plumbing businesses will fail in their first three years, sadly. And it doesn't make sense because plumbing is one of those businesses where there's work everywhere. So that shouldn't be a problem. So I'm gonna give over go I'm gonna go over eight of the biggest mistakes that I believe plumbing businesses make that cause them to go under. Let's start with me. I'm still in the process of learning all this. I think I'm only on my fourth year. I've been a plumber for much longer, uh, over 10 years, but, and to be honest, I kind of maybe cheated a little because I'm third generation plumber. So thank you, grandpa, rest his soul. But uh, we've got plumbing in the blood here. And uh, I've gotten to I've got to see family run businesses before, so I think that helped get me primed from a young age to kind of understand the concepts. And you know, I've got friends that have plumbing businesses, and I can see a lot of issues. I feel like mine's doing really well. Um, we seem to be profitable. Um, you know, would I like to make more money? Of course, who wouldn't? Uh, but uh, at the same time, it's doing well, and I feel like things are going in the right direction, which is like this. It doesn't go in a straight line. So let's get into it. In case you don't know me, my name's Morgan. I own a small plumbing business in Southern Oregon called On It Plumbing. Uh, we specialize in service and drain cleaning. And like I said, I've, I'm about four years down the rabbit hole with this business. I owned a pest control business before. And to be honest, all service businesses are about the same. So whether you're in pest control, electrical, um, heating and air, I mean, I feel like it's kind of the same principle, uh, just different work, right? So third generation, I've gotten to see the ups and downs of my <clears throat> parents and grandparents and here I am trying to see if I can improve it and do any better uh, for my family. Let's go over the top eight mistakes that I see plumbing businesses make. I think number one is a guy rolls out, starts his shop, and he is doesn't have a lot of work going on. So he takes what he can get and he's working cheaper than everybody else. Therefore, he's not charging enough money. So not charging enough, okay? Um, if you're not charging enough money, you're not going to make it. Um, when you run a business, a lot of things happen in the background, whether you end up having to do a refund or cover your guys to go fix something um, on your dime that went wrong. Um, van breaks down, you got to buy a new van because you've got jobs scheduled and then all of a sudden you got no way to get them done. Things come up. And if you don't have money in the piggy bank to pull it out and send it and implement it, you're in trouble, right? Now, um, yeah, you can get business loans, but not right off the bat. It's pretty tough. Once you start out, you try to get a loan and it, you might be able to do that, but it's a lot more difficult up front. And so once you get established, then it's a lot easier to get loans, which can help you out if you, if you need it. Um, so number one is just not charging enough. Make sure you figure out how much it's going to cost you every month to run this business, including, you know, paying yourself ads, health insurance, vehicle insurance, parts. Uh, and then what's it going to cost to make what kind of money you need to make on top of that, at least to match probably what your previous lifestyle was, or maybe a little bit of a pay cut, but you got to figure that out and then divide it by your work hours. Okay. I got to take this. So say you've got uh, $20,000 of, well, let's start out more realistic. Say you got $10,000 that you need to make every month in order to make 4,000 and 6,000 goes into the business. All right. So let's say $10,000, I guess. We'll divide that by how many hours are in a work week. Um, you're probably going to work a lot more than this, but let's just say 40 because that's the standard. There's four weeks in a month. It's 160 billable hours if you could bill for 100% of your time, which you can't, by the way. So let's go divided by 160. That's $62.50. But realistically, how many hours are we going to work and bill for? Especially starting out, probably only about half the time. So let's say we've got 80 billable hours. So we just went from 60 bucks to 
125. So right there, you can see where if you make a little bit of a mistake on how much you're charging, it's the difference between going out of business or staying in business. So make sure you pay attention to the numbers. I think a lot of plumbers are not numbers guys, and I think uh, it's kind of important if you want to succeed. Number two, not responding. All right, not responding. Maybe I didn't put this in the right order, but there's so many guys out there that they start out, they get these remodels or they get new construction. And then, you know, a little old lady that was referred by a friend of yours calls and, hey, um, I've got a leak under my house and uh, I, I really need it fixed. Okay, well, I, I'm stuck on a remodel for the next three days and I'm sorry, I, I can't get to you today or tomorrow. So call my buddy over at Onnit Plumbing uh, because that's what they are specialized in. And then they call me and my CSR answers the phone. Thanks for calling on it. Uh, how can we help you? Oh, I've got a water leak under mass. Oh, cool. I can have somebody out there before the end of the day, probably within the next couple hours. Is that okay? That's great. I, everyone else told me it would take two weeks. Responding to those customers, um, you know, obviously, I think you need to specialize in plumbing. If you want to do remodels and new construction, do those. And you, your hourly rate can come down because you're billing for all your hours. With us, we do service, so we're obviously driving a lot, and not a lot of our time is billable technically, so the hourly rate has to go up. But figure out what your niche is, and then just really go hard at that. And starting out, you know, obviously take what you can get, um, but not responding is a big one because by responding, you're building that um, trust. So if you know, so um, you know, let's say Miss Moore. She calls and she's got a, uh, uh, a you know, water heater went out. Well, she talks to Mrs. Johnson, right, or Mrs. Uh, Jackson and w somebody we've worked for in the past. And, well, you know, I called on it and they're not cheap, but, man, they got it done same day. They call us, boom, and it starts a snowball, which as people, you know, they, as long as you do professional quality work and you respond quickly, that starts this snowball that kind of grows and grows and, um, eventually leads to having a business. So I would say just make sure that whether you're specializing in dealing with subcontract or contractors and you're a sub as a plumber or you're doing new construction only or you're doing service only, whoever your customer is, reach out to them, respond, be very responsive. Hey, I ran into this problem. What do you want me to do about it? You know, um, there's a uh, that is a huge part of being successful. Your contractors will really appreciate it. Your customers will really appreciate it. Um, it's it's the way to go. It's called business. So I would say that's a that's a huge, huge thing that guys miss out on. They have a bad day. They don't answer their phone. They go fishing. They don't answer their phone. I'm sorry, but you decided to start a plumbing business. So it's go time, buddy. Um, you know, and, and hopefully you can get out of that and eventually hire someone to answer the phones for you. But uh, that's that's down the road. So number three would be no system, no plan. You know, I see, I feel like I see a lot of my buddies or people starting these little businesses. And what they do is uh, they just start a business and they think it's just plumbing, but it's not. You know, it's not a job anymore. It's a business. And the think of the business as a machine. That machine is there to make money and it's a separate entity from you. So you're here. This is your business. This thing needs to start making money without you being the business, right? Uh, it's, I don't know how to explain it properly, but if you don't, you need to start having a system. So how are you going to price things to where it's standardized? How are you going to word your contracts so that your warranties and your exclusions are in the details of each job. How are you going to build a platform that you can schedule jobs and not miss appointments? How are you going to make it to where it's re replicable so when you do decide to hire somebody, they can understand it and not just be totally lost and have no idea where what to do, right? Because that's kind of how I'd say my dad's business was, was it was just you were kind of a owner operator in the truck. You know, he would give you a list of calls and then you would just have to call them and schedule and people wouldn't be available. It was a mess. Uh, the way we have it set up, see Elizabeth, our, our office uh, gal, she is our CSR and she 
takes the calls and dispatches them out to the technicians. And then, you know, I will be dispatched out too as kind of a backup if I need to be, which is quite often. That's why I'm here right now. Um, I, uh, I would like to say that I'm out of the woods and I don't have to work, but that's not true. I go out in the field still almost every day. Um, so just be prepared for that and uh, start building a plan and a system. So like, you know, hopefully, depending on how this year goes, I'll get an, a guy that I could say is a supervisor. He'll take my backup position and a lot of the other work I do, and then we'll hire another plumber. And then it can kind of get me a little bit more removed from the day-to-day task so I can shoot videos like this more often. Um, number four, the problem that I see is no employees. And yeah, employees are, it's a, it's a bumpy road. It's a, it's a wild ride. It's gonna, it's probably, it, it may not be something that you even like. And sometimes I question it, but you got to have a team, you know, just like the military, the army, what would the army be with one guy? Think of that like a business. What would the, the, um, what would Walmart be with one person? It just, if you're going to have a business, it requires a team of people to help make it all work because you are just one person. You, you might think you're good at everything, but you're probably not. Um, you're going to have your strengths and weaknesses. And by hiring people, you'll start to find that, wow, this person's way better than me. Like Elizabeth, our CSR, she's way better at scheduling and talking to customers than I ever could have been. And, uh, dealing with bouncing jobs around and rescheduling people. I wasn't that good at it. I would just work myself to the ground and end up working until 8 p.m. trying to keep everybody happy. So if you don't have employees, it's going to be really hard to get off the ground because you're just going to ultimately be a slave to yourself. And uh, that I've been there most of my life, I would say. And that's not a not a fun place to be. It's a struggle and it just feels like you're digging yourself into a hole that you're never going to get out of and you're probably right. So at some point you got to make that decision to say, hey, I'm going to hire somebody and then you got to make them efficient. You got to hire them. You've got to basically get them to do their duties on their own and try to make it um, automatic and that's going to take some time. That's a job in itself is to figure out how to do that. So we're up to um, two plumbing techs, a laborer that, that's, that helps us with a lot of stuff, the C, uh, Elizabeth, our CSR, and myself that's owner slash tech. So three plumbers, assistant, CSR, pretty small business still, but uh, um, bigger's not always better. I wouldn't like to get huge, but a couple more guys to help out would be awesome. So, by the way, if you're in the Southern Oregon area and you want to be offered a plumbing career that I believe is would be very healthy for you and good pay, uh, give me a call at On It Plumbing. This backwards camera thing's messing me up. Number five, no business sense or customer service sense. I think a lot of guys, they're good plumbers. They don't necessarily know how to deal with customers. When you show up to a job, if they called for a leaky water heater, um, well, let's just say they called for a water heater that's got no hot water. Okay, that's a good example. A lot of guys that are plumbing minded are going to look at it and they're going to say, oh, let me change the thermocouple and they get it going. And, they do, and they're and they like, oh, you're good to go, man. You know, 295 or whatever the cost is, 395. Okay, that's cool. You got them going today. But you didn't even talk with the customer. You didn't interact. You know, first thing we're going to do is look at the age. If it's 20 years old, well, A, it's out of warranty by a long shot. B, can we flush the tank? Is it even drainable at this point? C, did we ask the customer, are they getting enough hot water? Are they lacking in hot water? Um, is it up to code? If it leaks, is it going to leak on the floor or in a pan? If we see anything like that, we're going to make a recommendation and give them options. You know, we're not going to tell them they have to change it, but we'll say we can attempt to fix it with doing this. Second option is we can replace it with bringing it up to code or third option, we could go tankless or upgrade it. You know, by asking that you'd be surprised how many people want to do the long-term fix rather than the minimum repair. I'm not, and most people do want the cheap repair, but you know, there's a decent amount of people out there, like maybe a third or quarter that are like, no, I want to upgrade this tank or I want to replace it just to be ahead of the game. It's like, okay, great. 
So you just turn that small job into a much bigger job, which equates to more profit for the business. And uh, ultimately, if that water heater thermopile went out and then it leaks six months later, you don't know how many times I've gotten people to just say, thank you for just offering me to replace it. I had a plumber come out here and work on it two times in the last couple of years, and he didn't even give me any options. It's not like you're being a pushy salesman. You're just giving them choice. Um, number six, um, poor work quality. Okay. This is tough as you grow because you're probably a really good plumber, but then as you hire people, you've got to ensure that they're going to be quality, you know, do quality work as well. So one thing, what we've found, I'm still struggling with this, but my guys do pretty clean work and they've gotten a lot better. Um, we make sure they take photos and upload them to our system so that I, if I have to, I can look through them and go, yeah, that looks good or that doesn't look good. Or if the customer complains, I can look at it and go, yeah, we got to go fix that. Or nope, looks looks perfect. Um, and it's just somebody complaining and we, you know, we'll have to hash it out on the office side. Number, uh, so poor work quality, definitely a problem. And then what we like to do as well is I have Elizabeth, our CSR, she calls after like a week and ask the customer if everything's going well. And, you know, sometimes it's tough to do because sometimes you'll get an earful if they think you charge too much or um, something happened. And so you got to try to make it right. But uh, it's kind of a tough to make that call, but it's you got to do it. it. Treat the customers properly. Um, so, you know, make sure that it's quality work. And uh, also, if there's a permit to be purchased, I always do if you know I, you know I know a lot of plumbers out there that's another thing oh I don't need to get a permit for a water heater in Oregon you're supposed to get one and so we do every time that we put one in because we're it's just easier that way to make sure it's done right done legally if anything comes up we did it properly right so I would get in the habit if you're wanting to grow your business to just get in the habit of getting permits even for things that you think are kind of stupid, you know, um, but, but I would recommend it. So number seven, we're almost there guys. Number seven is not enough work ethic. You know, if a customer complains, you don't get on the defensive and say, well, I did the best I could and I'd like to see your plumber do any better. You know, it's try to be empathetic. That customer believes there's a problem and listen to him. Okay. I understand your concern, you know, come rather than my guys did great. You're just confused okay, I'm sorry that you feel this way about it. Let me uh, look at the photos. Okay, man, well, this looks like it was done to code. I can send this to a county inspector and let you know what they say or forward the email, um, or you can, and we can go from there. And uh, there he is. So try not to get worked up over a customer. You know, this is a once in a two, three year experience for them. And this is a daily experience for you. So if you're letting customers get you worked up, you need to work on uh, learning how to deal with that, right? You just, that's not, not necessary. Um, number eight would be poor equipment. I mean, this isn't going to necessarily make it or break it because I've always, you know, I've been on a budget many times before, so I understand that. But like good example is when I first started out, I had a decent van that I built and uh, the shelving and it was an Isuzu. Busy time. Anyways, we'll cut to the chase. I'm back. Uh, I got in my first vehicle accident, totaled it. And I had five, six jobs scheduled out. I was a one-man show. Um, luckily, my cousin had a plumbing business, and I just told him I would split it with him 50-50 because he wasn't doing much at the time. And uh, he helped me go run my calls, and we ran some of his, and made it work. And then I bought that van from him. And the thing like a month later, I think I paid him 13, 14,000 for it. And a month later broke down on I five, just electrical problem. And it still to this day sits over there as like a storage shop for me. And as a reminder to not be cheap when it comes to like very important equipment. There's some things you can save a lot of money on, like, you know, channel locks. You can get doils from Harbor Freight, and they work, in my opinion, just as good as a channel lock. But, like, a plumbing van that gets you to your job, you've got to have one that's reliable. So now I've got 2021 
Transit, Promaster, and, uh, you know, stuff with really low miles on it. The D- the D- diesel Kodiak that I drive that's got, it's old, it's an 09, but it's got really low miles and it's a diesel. It's, uh, that is going to be one of the biggest hinders is if you try to just cheap out on your van or your transportation or your advertising, for example, you got to have ads. Um, you, you know, you got to spend money on ads to get calls. You, there's things like that where don't be cheap on it. If you feel lost, hire a mentor. Um, it can help you kind of at least just, it doesn't give you the answers necessarily because it's all in front of you every day, but it helps plant you in a spot and then give you a target and know where you need to go. Whereas if a lot of guys starting a business are just kind of, you know, there is no target. They're just kind of doing their thing day to day. So there's your eight. Big, there's the eight biggest reasons that I think I see plumbing businesses fail. And I think when I say plumbing businesses, I more mean like plumbers that are starting a business. Okay. So in conclusion, the biggest mistake that you can make right now is not charging enough. I believe that to be fact. I think a lot of guys are not charging enough. So therefore they cannot grow because it takes money to grow that plumbing business. So if you think you're being a hero and being the cheap guy, think again because as soon as something your back goes out and you can't show up to go work half price, that customer is calling the next person on the list and it might be me. So uh, make sure you charge enough to take care of yourself. I think that's very important. And don't don't feel like you're doing anything wrong because that's that's what you have to do. That's the way that business works. As usual, if you have any questions, comments, or you think I'm wrong, uh, leave it in the comments below. I'd love to chat it out with you, um, especially if you've got more experience owning a plumbing business than I do. I'm always, I may have questions for you, so get in the, the chats, and if you've got a channel or something, I may follow you. Um, this is a place that we need to learn and work together because it's tough to be a plumbing business owner, and you're going to go through some major roller coasters. It affects your relationship. It affects your, your marriage if you're married, your kids, your whole life, Monday through Sunday, and we need to stick together and figure this stuff out. Please subscribe. We'll see you on the next one. More plumbing tips. Maybe I'll be in here. Maybe I'll be out there, but we'll, uh, we'll put something out here soon.